Hi everyone, welcome back. And if you haven't already done so, please pause the video right now and hit the subscribe button. This is another video as part of my tips and tricks series. And here I want to quickly talk about the proper way to convert your unsigned integer 16 or 16 bit images into 8 bit images in Python. Well, uh, I'm going to talk about converting your unsigned integer 16 NumPy array properly converting that into a uh, unsigned integer 8-bit array. And what is this deal about 16 and 8-bit? Well, if you are working with scientific images, oftentimes you may be working with 16-bit. And there is a good reason, because you need all that range for any post-processing. But in certain applications, you may not need all that range. For example, if you see on the screen, the goal here is to just segment the nuclei. And these are very large, very large blobs. And I do not need a fine texture that is captured. Well, I do need the fine texture that's captured in the nuclei if I'm using deep learning and other textural based methods. But converting from 16 bit to 8 bit is not going to affect that by a lot. So in this example, I would like to convert all my images from 16 to 8 bit. So what is the proper way of doing that? Uh, there are a few ways you can use OpenCV, you can use scikit image, but if you just want to stop this video right now and uh, go on with your life, the key essence of this entire video is normalize your image to the maximum pixel value and then convert it into a unsigned integer eight. That's it. Now let me go ahead and jump into the code to show you how it is done at least a two or three different ways. So in my case, my 16 bit image is coming from a microscope a Zeiss microscope to be precise. And Zeiss microscope, I store images as CZI format. Of course, you can save them as TIFF and others. So whatever format you're working with, uh, whether it is a DICOM or satellite images, uh, go ahead and use the appropriate library to read that image and convert that image into a NumPy array in Python. So the way I'm going to do that is using CZI file library and uh, I already installed pip install CCI file, and this is my file name right there, osteosarcoma underscore 01.cci. So uh, let's get started. So first of all, for those of you wondering about what version Python I'm using, it's 3.7.11. So this is uh, uh, relatively recent as of uh, even January 2022. And I know 3.9 is out there and other versions I have a stable environment right here, and I'm not ready to move to uh, move up in terms of Python versions. OK, now let's go ahead and import our CZI file. And uh, I'm also going to print out the version in case you're watching this, I don't know when, in future. So that's the version, 2019.7.2. And these two libraries are pretty stable for a long time, so no point in worrying about their versions at this point. So uh, this is for plotting, and that's, of course, NumPy to uh, make sure we, we have the right library to work with uh, the NumPy arrays, obviously NumPy. And let's go ahead and read the image. And this image, and again, CZI file, the reason I love to work with, uh, with the native format, the CZI file format, uh, in this case from uh, Zeiss microscope, is because it captures all the information about uh, uh, if it is a time series, if it is a Z stack, if it is multi-channel, if it has multiple scenes and so on. So if I print out the shape of my array that I just read, you see the shape is one by one by three by 1104 by 1376 by one. What's going on? I mean, for those of you who just work with JPEGs and uh, PNGs, you are probably used to these three, right? I mean, the channels may come later, like uh, you know, 1024 by 768 by three for an RGB image. Uh, for scientific images, especially microscopy images, you may have uh, a time series, not just one image, but the same field. As the time goes by, you take more images. Or it could be different scenes. Hey, scene one here, scene another scene there, another scene somewhere else. Or it can be Z stack. It can be images at different layers. Yeah. Right. And it is multi channel, like different channels. And these are just uh, width and height dimensions. OK, enough about uh, images. Let me go ahead and extract the relevant channels, which is uh, going to be my three by uh, width and height dimensions. I don't even need all three channels because these three channels represent three different unique features in this image, like channel number one, I think, is 
uh, anyway, these are three different channels. One, uh, one of the channels is going to highlight the cytoplasm. The uh, other channel is going to highlight the nucleus. And that's the one that I want in this case. And the channel that's highlighting the nucleus is the third one, which is stained with, uh, which represents the DAPI stained uh, regions. Okay, so I know biologists probably understand what I'm talking about, but if you do not know, if you, if you don't even understand what I'm saying here, don't worry. Your starting point may be right here because all I'm trying to do is get my NumPy array ready. So now my NumPy array is ready. If you look up here, my DAPI image is uh, of uh, width 1104 and height 1376. And if I plot it, you'll see exactly what my image looks like. So this is my input image. I called it DAPI. This is my input image. You see how I have a dark background and I have different nuclei in the, uh, in the foreground. And my goal eventually is to segment these nuclei, separate them and get all the morphological parameters that I can. So for that, I do not need a 16 bit. If you look at my DAPI image, this is a 16 bit unsigned integer. I need to convert that into eight. So how do I do that? Well, the easiest way is uh, just import a library like OpenCV. And within OpenCV, there is a method called convert scale apps. And uh, I've seen uh, a lot of code out there on GitHub and other places that actually uses this. Again, it depends on the context, nothing wrong with it. But in this case, please do not do this because when you do that, it's going to rescale it. But when you plot it, you see how horrible this image looks like. Uh, all it's doing is it's actually saturating all these pixels. Of course, it did convert that into 8-bit, unsigned 8-bit, but this is not what we want. It, you are losing all the features that you have within these nuclei and they are all completely saturated and in some cases it makes all these nuclei combined together into a single blob making it very difficult for you to segment. If I go back to our original image you can individually see these that I mean this area that you have four different nuclei. After this operation you can do that. So definitely do not do that okay. And also, this is acceptable, but I don't recommend it. In a scikit image, image as ubyte converts your NumPy array from any float or whatever to 8-bit, unsigned integer 8. So when you use that, and when you apply that to your image, let's go ahead and apply that. And if you look at this image, it looks great. It looks like your original image. In fact, if I go back here, they both look almost identical right there. The reason I do not recommend doing this is uh, let's go ahead and print out the maximum pixel value in our array. And the maximum pixel value is eight. If I go back and look at the values right there, it's three, two, two. So it's the range is not from zero to 255. And this severely constrains you in terms of what you can do with this array. So that's why I do not recommend this. And of course, this is the area where we have all the saturated pixels with values of 255. OK, now let's look at the three uh, ways or normal ways of doing that. I already gave you the cheat sheet earlier. What we are trying to do is normalize and then uh, convert them to 8-bit. So how do you normalize? One way is manually, so using NumPy array. Every pixel divided by the maximum. So what is the maximum in our DAPI image, in our input image? The maximum pixel value is 4,667, which is a shame because we have a dynamic range of 0 to 65,532 sorry, 35. And now we are only using pixels or values from 0 to 4,667. So first thing first, let's stretch it to, uh, you know, so the full range, 65, 5, 35, and then convert them to 8-bit. So we have a very nice image or uh, NumPy array to work with. That's exactly what we are doing, normalizing, multiplying by 255 and then converting that into a DAPI 8-bit right there. And now let's go ahead and plot. The image should look pretty much the same, except your pixel values, what is this, DAPI 8-bit C, are reasonable. They're going from zero. In fact, uh, they'll go from zero to, uh, zero to 255. So let's go ahead and this is DAPI, sorry, let's do this, DAPI 8-bit underscore C. So 0 to 255 right there, uh, sorry, um, yeah, right there for 8-bit. Uh, this is acceptable, but I definitely recommend using one of the uh, one of the libraries like OpenCV or Scikit-Image. And it's make, first of all, it makes it easy, a single line and uh, easy to track. And more importantly, you don't have to worry about all your uh, rounding errors and all that uh, when you, when you, well, 
uh, when you when you work with these type of libraries. So what am I doing here? With an open CV, you have normalize and apply the normalize onto your uh, onto your 16 bit image and define the range. We want to go from zero to 250, uh, 255 using uh, min max normalization right there, and then uh, convert your final uh, your image into a eight bit unsigned integer. So when you do this, and uh, let's go ahead and plot it. Hopefully the image should look great. Right there. It looks identical to before and also when you look at your values this is what dappy 8 bit d right there 45 38 32 almost identical to what we got using our manual method uh, when i say manual it's numpy okay let's finish this off by doing this another way which is scikit image these are my two favorite libraries for image processing OpenCV and scikit image that's why i tend to uh, show you both that's why I'm showing you both here. Okay, so from scikit image, I'm going to import exposure in addition to image as you byte. And exposure has a method called uh, rescale intensity. This is very similar to normalize right there. So as the name suggests, it's rescaling it and rescaling it to what values. It recognizes that my DAPI is a 16-bit unsigned integer uh, data, data type and it rescales to values between 0 to uh, 65,535. And once it rescales it, we are going to save it as a uh, U-byte, which means it converts it back to our 8-bit uh, image, and then we are going to visualize it. So that's pretty much what we're going to do right there. And look at the plot. That looks identical to the one before. And also look at the values here, the value for this, 45, 38, 31, almost identical to OpenCV. There'll be some rounding off uh, issues between these, or uh, uh, but but these two are almost identical as you can see. So any the, any of these three is is okay, acceptable, and just be aware of uh, of these. Like if you use convert scale abs for any of your applications, just see what the implications are and is that uh, okay. And same with uh, same with converting to image as U byte. Like, do you need to normalize? If my input image is completely going from zero to sixty five five thirty five, then may maybe I can just directly convert to U byte without any normalization. But look at where the information is present uh, in terms of your histogram, and do you need to scale it or not scale it? So please be aware of all of those. Okay, guys, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I hope you found this to be useful. And if you uh, if you have any topics that you, I mean, these type of little topics, uh, I know you keep asking me about uh, uh, object segmentation using deep learning and all that. I have those in my list, but any little snippets or if you like these, let me know. Go ahead and like this video so I know that you love this type of content. Okay, great. Uh, enjoy learning this year and uh, and let's meet again in the next video. Thank you.